Hello and welcome to a podcast about something where each week I'm joined by fellow podcasters as we take a deep dive into whatever it is we find interesting. I'm your host Calvin and this week I'm joined by Carla and Michael from the Go Postal podcast as we talk about online dating and dating apps. How are you guys doing today? Excellent. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I, you know, I'm, I'm good. Kids are in bed, so it's it's a good night. <laughs> that sounds like a win. Uh, if, exactly. If not in bed by bedtime. Uh, there's no bedtime anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's whenever we can manage. <laughs> You're like if it's between this hour and this hour, we've we're winning for the night. Yeah, pretty. That's pretty much how it is. Okay. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Go Postal podcast, which I am a listener and I, I thoroughly enjoy it, but uh, my listeners Thanks. may not be. Oh. Well, thank you. Um, well, we like we say at the beginning of our show, we're a grab bag of fun. We uh, just like talking about uh, history and fun facts, and we kind of tie it into a theme. Yeah, it uh, started off by just uh, reading drunken postcards that we were sending each other, and then it just oh, evolved fun. into this. Yeah, well, we decided our livers couldn't handle continuing writing each other <laughs> drunk postcards and getting other people to send us drunk postcards. Well, it's like herding wild cats. Like, it just – it doesn't happen uh, yeah. and because getting anybody to do anything drunk is really hard and to get them to do it drunk while you're not there, to force them to do it drunk, uh, that sounds really bad, to get them to write these postcards to you drunk, it's you shouldn't impossible. force people to do things when they're drunk. No, nothing. I've learned that. <laughs> or, but politely request them. That's even, that's almost as hard. Uh, yes. So, because, uh, yeah, attention span is like nothing. So it evolved into, uh, we just like crazy stories. You don't have to be drunk to have a crazy story. So That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I always wondered where Go Postal, because I'll admit I haven't gone back to all the way to the beginning of Go Postal, so I always wondered how that fit in, and now I know. So there there we go. I'm yeah, happy yeah. That, that we did this, so I could at least learn that without having to listen to <laughs> 50 episodes. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you go back to the very first episode, you get to hear me. I, I guess that would have been easier. Faced. Yeah, completely schwacy face. Uh, and it, 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 it was fun in the beginning, but there is zero direction, so... Uh, it, it's, we've definitely gotten a lot better as we've gone along like most podcasts, I think. Yeah. That's what I've learned is, uh, the, the beginning is not as good as the end. Quite. That's why it's always good to listen to the last episode a podcast puts out. You can kind of see where they are now. And then, <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. if you're coming to a new podcast, definitely listen to the most recent rather than the earliest. Cause right. you're, you're not going to get a good feel for what it is if you listen to the earliest. <laughs> and then I like to go back and see that evolution be like, okay, well I know where they're going. So I know it gets a lot better, but then yeah. it's cool to see where they went along the way. So it's, I think it's fun both ways. It's always weird going back. Um, like, cause I'll do that sometimes too, the same way you said, and you go back to the beginning and people are making like uh, cultural or news references, and you're like, "Wait, what? What year is it? What day is it?" <laughs> it, it just like it always because I'll kind of get lost. I'm usually doing it while I'm driving, so I just get lost in whatever they're talking about. And then all of a sudden, they'll talk about something that was happening four months ago, and I'll be like, "Wait, what's going on? Th right. Didn't that happen? Like, what? What did what I miss? Did that happen to? again?" <laughs> um, yeah, no, totally. And like, I think our our name is still relevant, Go Postal, because it is about being crazy or people going crazy or doing crazy things. You know, I have a segment that's hysterical history and usually it's just some part of history that's just completely nuts or insane. So I, I think it still fits and we still want, and people do still send us postcards, which is cool. There so yeah, it's, it is good fun. So. All right. Send them postcards and uh, follow them on Twitter, Facebook, anything like that. Uh, yeah. We're uh, you can send it. Uh, your story is at gopostalpodcast at gmail.com and we are on twitter facebook and instagram um, at gopostalpodcast so we're pretty easy to find soups there we go <laughs> check them out but we are not here to talk about podcasts today even though it's exciting we're here to talk about online dating and dating apps which i do not have any experience with so this is going to be a lot of fun <laughs> I uh, I got married before the dating app boom, so I, I just missed out on it. Um, but Carla Carla insure, assures me that she has plenty of background for all three of us to cover. Probably oh, at this point. <laughs> God, maybe too much for my own sanity. 
Well, okay. So I want to ask, um, Calvin, how did you meet your wife then? Because it kind of goes into this whole thing. If you don't, if she doesn't mind us asking. She doesn't listen, so she she won't care that we're talking about her. <laughs> um, I can say whatever I want about her, and she will never know. Um, we met at work, which neither of us work there anymore. Um, not because of anything we did, because we met there. But um, it was a when I first moved back to Florida, ten, ten no, eight years ago. Um, I got a job at this place where she already worked, and we started dating and kept dating and got married. So that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty classic story for a lot of, I don't know, adults our age. Uh, Yeah. It's once you're out of college, there aren't many, especially because I've, I've since being out of college, I've moved three times. So like, there's not an easy way to other than work. Like I'm not just going out and meeting somebody randomly. I'm not making like, there's very difficult ways to make friends, you know, beyond who you work with or who you see if you live in an apartment building or in your neighborhood, right. basically. Yeah. And keep, keep that in the back of your head because I do want to uh, come back to that point because it is a really important one, I think, with the dating apps. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. And Michael, how did you meet your lovely, amazing spouse, David? Same. Work. That's right. <laughs> the, the musical. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I know this story. Yep. We met at work and we don't work there anymore and we started dating and then we got married because he got into school in canada and i needed to come with him so huzzah yay all right well okay to be fair i was married and no longer married and i met my husband through a friend which is like another classic way to meet someone mm-hmm. but this friend knew him through a whole have have friends friend. though i yeah. found I knew this this friend, or, or she knew this guy through uh, having been living at the same homeless shelter. So I had a, a little bit more of an obscure, interesting background how I met my husband. But uh, dating apps are now are now the thing. That's that's a yes. good way to meet people. They they are they are the way to go, and it's definitely. Um, I have pretty bad social anxiety. I, I have a hard time, like even if I'm at a bar with my friends, like I can never approach a woman at a bar or something like that. So I, I always kind of thought that that would I, I would have kind of lived in dating apps. I never got into online dating because like Match.com and eHarmony, those th- things seemed like way too desperate uh, when I was <laughs> I got married when I was 24. So like when I'm 20, 21, 22, 23 years old, I'm not like like I'll meet somebody when I meet somebody. I wasn't in a hurry. So right. I didn't need to do go online dating i i figured you know i'll meet somebody through friends or whatever at some point in my life or through work or whatever and um but then like a couple years after i started dating my wife it was like tinder came out and just like all these much easier things than you have to create a profile and answer all these questions and you have to be funny in your profile and, and you have to pay have for it click- <laughs> yeah I, I, that that wasn't for me and i'll when we get to actually talking about the different apps and things i'll i have a story of one foray into online dating that i did but it wasn't actually me um (laughs) and that's about as far as i ever went into it because i just didn't care to meet somebody that way but online dating dating is the worst i mean it seemed i don't i i can't compare it to the app dating because i i never was in the sea of fish that people (laughs) talk about when the app dating came out Right. Same here. But I did kind of dabble in online dating, mostly because a gay man in the suburbs of Colorado, you don't really get to find many, many other uh, gay people outside yeah, of the see club. <laughs> well, OK, that's that's fun. OK, so I'll let me let me bring up some stats for you guys as we are talking Ooh, about it. Stats. Uh, I have I, history, too, uh, that we'll get into. I, so I, I got you brought the stats too, and yeah. I'll bring history. All I right. got history as well. So uh, we'll, we'll fill in where we are, we're missing out. So um, <laughs> let's see. There was a lot of stats about online dating, but um, they called this. Oh God, of course, I don't even have proper notes. Um, I've got lots of notes. Uh, uh, screw this copy and paste nonsense. So uh, the, the history of dating apps, they yeah. go back to about 1685. <laughs> That's what I found. That was when the first personal ad appeared in a British agriculture journal. 
So An agriculture journal. Yes, farmers Ooh. only. <laughs> farmers only created the uh, not in person dating craze. <laughs> I this love was it. 1685. 1685 was the first personal ad. That's amazing. And but now they yes, have like thank you, farmers, PBS.org. farmers.com or something, isn't that it? Far, yeah, farmers only I think is yeah. the uh, And I have a I have a section to go over weird dating sites too, which farmers <laughs> only didn't make the the cut cuz I could see how like farmers only like if you're a farmer, you want to meet somebody who's about that lifestyle because that would be hard if you met like a city gal and uh wanted to try and teach her how to you know take care of a farm and expect her absolutely. to absolutely right yeah, it's that, a that, niche that lifestyle going. yeah um well Not for me apparent stats stats let's see we have um do, 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 do. uh so according to uh the online dating magazine there are more than 7500 online dating websites there's 2,500 wow. alone in the U.S. And, and you're five, reading this from a magazine? Uh, this is for, it's for I'm so, citing it. <laughs> uh, it's a web. It's a website for a magazine for online dating. Seems odd. <laughs> it seems a bit obscure. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> they, they they might want to re- refigure uh, their whole life. Um, so there's about 5,000 around the world. Um, so, but yeah, as you were saying, there's some weird ones like niche sites for clowns, trekkies, uh, even sea captains. Uh, but see, yeah. I I get the niche ones. I I, I get that because like you want to meet somebody who shares your interest, and somebody like a Trekkie that is very very into that lifestyle and is dressing up, going to conventions, things like that. Like again, you're not going to meet somebody who works in a bank that, or I mean, you might meet somebody who works in a bank, but randomly, a, a banker or like a Wall Street type is not going to be in the same circles as somebody who dresses up and goes to conventions. Right. And a Trekkie who has or sleeps with someone who's not a Trekkie may not appreciate Klingon in the bed. Let's be honest. Exactly. <laughs> who doesn't like a little dirty Klingon in the bed? Uh, I would be a bit dismayed. I'll be, I'll be honest there. I'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> well, don't join the Trekkie dating site then. You're going to be Ooh. quite disappointed. <laughs> I will not do well. Um, so uh what you got talked about people who are desperate um it's funny that you say that because something in 2005 29 percent um uh said that we're starting to look at online dating in a positive light and now it's about 23 percent or sorry sorry we thought people are desperate and 23 percent now say that they're desperate so it's going down a little bit by about six percent mm-hmm. um in the last 15 years or so so it, the the stigma around it is changing, but not as quickly as I thought it would. Because like everybody I meet that's single now, you they've probably used a dating app or have thought about it. Well, and I and I wonder if if part of that because I would have thought that drop off was bigger than six percent because like you said, everybody who is in the dating world now probably has some of these apps on their phone and are using them. Um, to what extent they're using them is a different story, but um, you would. It, so I wonder if, if part of that is they don't consider something like Tinder online dating. Yeah. And it's like, should we be differentiating between online dating and dating apps? And it seems like a lot of these statistics don't necessarily differentiate between the two anymore because I think you can use either platform on the computer or on your phone. Yeah. And, oh. and I... If it were me, I wouldn't differentiate between the two. I mean, it's you're you're finding a date not in person, basically. Right. You're you're meeting them through the internet, regardless if how close they are to you. You're it's still online. Exactly, and and right. like they say that like Match. dot com is responsible for some of the most successful relationships to this day. Um, and so didn't the founder of one of those either match.com or eHarmony didn't like the founder's wife leave him for somebody she met on the site because he made up made her sign <laughs> is that a myth or did that actually happen? I actually don't know that is a really good question I'm gonna have to look it up while Please we're here. Do. Let's, let's pretend it happened um <clears throat> so what I was gonna say Michael about the stat I was looking for that somehow I accidentally deleted all my copying and pasting and moving stuff around um <laughs> about uh people like the LGBTQ community 
and uh, people who are, um, you know, can sign up for AARP will say uh, they're actually more likely to use a lot of these apps because they are, I don't want to say fringe communities. They had a specific word for it. Oh, they're they're a thin market, if you will. There are people who are, there's not a lot of them out there, so there's not as wide of a selection. So mm-hmm. almost all relationships in the LGBTQ community start on these apps um, because you can just find people a lot more easily. You don't have to like go to a bar and guess. Well, they might be, they might not be. Um, and if you're in a place that doesn't even have, say, a gay bar, you know, if you're in a smaller town, you know, that that could get really complicated and difficult and even dangerous. Yeah, <clears throat> especially when you talk about social anxiety, like think about going up and talking to someone and but not knowing whether or not they're going to be not only like not into you or not, but like also not um, even into your gender yeah yeah like not even like the same orientation so you have to like walk that fine line and that's where online dating and those apps do come in very handy and make you feel more connected to the community around you uh so there's an upside and then i mean wasn't grinder the first um dating app and that was geared towards homosexual men right am i correct in that I, I yes, no I I think I saw that somewhere in my research, and uh, like I, it was that was one of those like facts that's in the back of your head, and then like you read it, and I didn't write it yeah. down, but I think that is true. That Grinder was the first like that was built as an app, and it it was just for you know gay people to find each other, and I, I believe I, I've never used Grinder or Tinder, but I thought that Tinder was basically Grinder for now heterosexuals not the other way around like grinder came first and then tinder built off of that rather than tinder came first and grinder built off of that that yeah that sounds about right um because it is a, a for a lot of for men it tends to be for hookups like another thing i read and for women it's more they actually want something more than just a hookup but um okay so here's this tinder processes more than 1 billion swipes per day so that's left or right uh oh. yeah a billion <laughs> Have you ever seen those little like uh, robot fingers that they sell that'll just sit there and swipe right for you all day long? I saw a GIF with oh, one of those in it. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, but there are algorithms to these apps that are intense, and I've actually experienced them working in my favor. Um, so the more you swipe one way or the other is if you're like always swiping right, and there's apps that won't let you do that. I think like Bumble is one of them. You get blocked. But Tinder, if you just swipe right, they think you're a, you know, a spammer or scam or whatever. But right. if you swipe left all the time and you're too picky, they kind of like bury your profile a little bit because they want you to match. Like that's good for business for them. Um, so you got to kind of like fall in that middle category to get better, uh, I guess, matches. Um, so the average Tinder user spends about 90 minutes on the app per day. I'm like, I can't. It seems like that a lot. It seems like a lot. Like, I don't think I even spend that. I'm on Twitter a lot, and I don't think I'm even on Twitter that much. I'm definitely on Twitter that much. I'm like, I don't remember being on Tinder that much when I was on Tinder. Um, So they say, on average, women spend eight and a half minutes per session, while men spend about 7.2. I would have thought it would be longer for men. Well, I have this theory, because I thought the same thing, too, at first. But then I'm like, guys, to me, seem like they would just be swiping for the pictures. But women actually – Right. They're not reading the profiles. Right. Women will actually go into the profiles because I'm definitely one of those people. Like I had to go into the profiles to see before I'd swipe left because if somebody – I'm going to talk to someone. I got to make sure that we're not completely disagreeing on something essential. I, I would have had to make sure that the person I'm swiping on is not dumb. Right. Like that I, – I, I can't <laughs> – can't do dumb people. I'm sorry. Or like that they have anything on their profile to begin with, which which we'll get to that about like why people would swipe left or right. I think is very fascinating. Um, well, the only reason I thought it would be longer is because I figured men would mostly be doing it in the bathroom, <laughs> and that it would just they would they would be in there longer because they're like it would be a chicken and egg kind of situation. <laughs> they'd just be in the bathroom longer because they're on Tinder, and they'd be on Tinder longer because they're in the bathroom kind of thing. <laughs> God, I've done that like in my car before. I'm like, oh, I'm on Tinder. I'm just going to like hang out here for another minute and like 20 minutes later. I'm like, God damn it. I need to go inside and make dinner. <laughs> I can honestly say I don't use Tinder in the bathroom, but yeah. Um, okay. 
I can honestly say most men probably, probably do. do. Probably do. Probably <laughs> do. Um, okay, so anywhere from 50 to 80% of people who use online dating lie about themselves on their profile. Are we really surprised? Uh, was it 80%? Is 50 that what you said? 50 to 80%, which is it's a really 80%. big margin, but yeah. yeah. Um, but at least half yeah. of people lie. So just put that as the baseline. Uh, women tend to lie about their age, while 40% of men have admitted to lying about their jobs. People also tend to lie about height, weight, and income, which I, I mean, weight and income is not anything I've ever come across in a dating app. Height, uh, guys will specifically say I'm six foot. If they're tall, they'll say I'm six foot two because apparently that's important because I guess that's something women ask a lot. How tall are you? And then the short guys won't list their height. So it's kind of funny. Right. Yeah. If if, if there's a spot for height and it's not listed, it's definitely because the guy's yeah. under five. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sweetie. <laughs> and so you and David do not suffer from that problem at all, Michael. Nope. <laughs> so that that was always my thing on the dating profiles. Like everything I put was 100, 100% true. All my photos were really recent. All my information was accurate. Like, I, Were they singular photos or did you have four friends in it so people had to guess? I only had like one photo with other people in it so that they knew I actually had friends. It wasn't just like <laughs> setting up my camera and taking pictures of myself. I needed to know that they that I actually have a social life and that I know people. Um, so that was why I did that. But no, it was always mostly singular photos. Um, but also like, uh, you know, I put ridiculous shit in there just to, just so that I was getting the right kind of people talking. Like, if you want to, if you want to be friends with benefits, those benefits better be uh, health insurance and a 401k at my age, you know, shit like that. So uh yeah um i was i try to be honest because i i, I don't have time for idiocy just like you <laughs> no, that no makes sense to people yeah um and then like i'll see a lot because like online there's always lists of like funniest tinder profiles things like that kind of thing and they're like any of them that are girls are like it's like the all their profile says is buy me tacos and tell me I'm pretty or something like something that's not really actually funny, but a guy swiping right on somebody who looks attractive that also says that would think that's funny. <laughs> I guess. Um, You're like, Oh, she yeah. has, she's pretty and kind of maybe has a personality. Right. And <laughs> like Pictures personality. Exactly. <laughs> and it, it just feels like they, it feels like those people Googled what can I say funny in my profile and then put it in there, not actually <laughs> had a funny thought and put it in there anytime I see any of those lists. So it seems like they're, like you said, 50 at least 50 percent of people are lying. And th those are there's probably more micro lies like that of like I'm lying about how funny I actually am to, to try and get you to not just like my picture, but to also like my profile if you made it this far into looking at my profile. Right get your attention I, and hook them in. I've read and... some of those lists and they're funny. I think they're like, some of them are funny. They can, they can be. So yeah, some of them are very funny. A lot of them are the same thing. And it, it, like when you see one of them, it's funny the first time, but then when you see it for like the 50th time, it's not funny anymore and it's not unique anymore. And it's like, there's all these listed. Um, so this is a good question. Did you get a lot of like, opening lines like clever or well thought out opening lines or were people just usually like hey because that's another listicle that i'll see nowadays are like the best opening lines on oh tinder my God. um i actually follow the opposite uh which is on instagram this is some of my favorite accounts accounts like you know the text from last night account and the, but there's mm -hmm. ones out there that are like uh worst tinder lines ever or worst tinder profiles ever um, but it's I, I've personally gotten the worst the, the the winking smiley face. I'm like, what what am I supposed to That's say it. to that? Like, what does that even mean? That that literally conveys, okay, you're winking at me. Awesome. I am totally creeped out now. If somebody did that to me at the bar, I'd be like, <laughs> right, other way, walking now. <laughs> like, what makes you think this is gonna work as an emoji? Um, another one I had sent to me was uh so winking at the bar does not work Don't, either, and, people. Wink, winky face on Tinder does not work. Winking <laughs> across the bar, also Unless no you're James Franco in that gif, oh my god, that thing makes me melt every time. If you can do that, 
and you're James Franco. The one from Spider Man? Is, is that, that what it is? I don't know. I don't know what's from. It's just James Franco turning around, winking, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I think melt. it's the one from Spider Man. Yeah, like that. If you can do that, okay, you're sold. I'm yours, Miami. But if you can't do that and you're not James Franco, forget it. Um, and another one someone sent me was, uh, uh, does that ass bounce back? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? I have <laughs> no idea. Like, I, I just, I'm like, okay. No clue. So I've I've gotten some really weird intros. Um, clever ones I've had are people like oh, actually responding to my profile, which I did. Uh, I I didn't delete the app. Thought I had, but uh, logged back in. So uh, here's here's my quick profile. It's not that quick. Sorry. Uh, I kickbox so I can eat cheese. I have my dream job, but I'm an expert IKEA furniture assembler. Mario Kart might be the best invention of our generation. Have a podcast. Duh. Uh, city is better than outdoors. Meyer Briggs personality exam results near perfect. Need someone to watch Black Mirror with. Lived in UK for two years. Go mess with my Morticia. Uh, I'm at the age where if you want to be friends with benefits, those benefits better be healthcare and a 401k. Um, so I have gotten a lot of Mario Kart. And buy me tacos and tell me I'm pretty. Yeah. I mean, that's just a given, obviously. Uh, because if that ass does bounce back, then it needs tacos. Um, exactly. But yeah, I get a lot of people challenging me to Mario Kart, which it, it's an instant sell. I'm like, yes, first date. I mean, that's a good first date. Yeah. And I've I've done a few of those first dates and they have been fucking awesome and have led to some really pretty great friendships or and a pretty good relationship. So. See, that would be the problem with starting with Mario Kart. You get friend zoned real quick. If the if the Mario Kart game is too good, you could uh, you, you don't want to ruin that with a real relationship. I mean, it's you want to find your equal, um, but you, you know it makes for good bets, which good bets can actually end in nakedness, which is nice. So, oh, that's true too. Yeah. So speaking of first dates, OK Cupid is responsible for about forty thousand first dates every day. So forty thousand. Wow. And like o- a lot. OK Cupid is. Skeezy. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about OK Cupid. Um, so as of 2015, 38% of Americans who describe themselves as quote unquote single and looking have used an online dating site. So that's almost almost half. So that was in 2015. So that may be even more so today. I would probably think so. Yeah. Um, so speaking of first dates, uh, okay. If you are not going on an online dating app, um, what did you guys do for your first dates? Did you just do the classic dinner in a movie or, or what, what do normal people do that aren't forced to do this horrible what? swipe left, swipe right thing? Mine was a bit, or Michael, I'll let you go first. <clears throat> uh, we took a road trip to California from Colorado. Yeah, it's a rough first date. <laughs> oh my god, it's <laughs> a long first date. <laughs> well, we were, <clears throat> excuse me, we were we were friends before. Oh, okay. uh, we we started like actually dating, and then we started dating, and we we were supposed to go on this camping trip with a bunch of our coworkers and friends, and they all bailed on us. And I was like, oh, well, my dad lives in Southern California. We could just go there. And he was like, okay. And then that ended up being our first alone time <laughs> that's a lot of alone time there we go well it it worked out nine right. years looks later. like it helped <laughs> um mine was actually um i was it was uh my friend's birthday party or his birthday and it was like his 30th birthday i want to say and i was only 23 he was a much older friend um, but I was actually going on a date with a different girl to dinner and then to his party. And since I worked with my now wife, I, we were going bowling and she said she liked bowling. I said, Oh, come bowling, you know, whatever, not a big deal. And we like, we were friendly through work already. So I went on this date with this other girl. It was going terribly because <laughs> she was boring and not interesting. Um, so we went to dinner and dinner was bad. And so then we went, got to bowling and uh, my wife showed up at the bowling and um, I, the other girl pretty much stopped talking to me and talked to other people. So I started talking to my now wife more and more. And we spent most of that night talking 
and went back to her apartment and nothing happened, but we were there all night talking pretty much throughout the night. And then it was a, it was Labor Day weekend. So it was like a three night long party for his birthday. (laughs) So she came to the next two nights of partying as well. Um, We didn't spend quite as much time together over the next two days, but uh, we didn't have our first like official date till like two weeks into the dating. Uh, And that was, we just went to dinner and a movie at that point, but we had already been, I guess, dating. I don't, I don't know. We had hung out (laughs) pretty much every other day since then because we worked together and lived right down the street from each other. Nice. I feel like a lot of good relationships start in that kind of friendship-ish area. With a bad date with somebody else. Yeah, that too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to wonder if that's ever happened to me where I end up like hanging out with someone else all night instead of my bad date. I don't, I don't think if that's ever happened to me, that's, that's not something I can check off on my list. Well, we got we got to bowling and like I I hadn't really moved on yet because like I I was still interested in her even though she had been boring but I was like okay you know I I had hung out with her a couple other times the other the bad date girl I had hung out with her a couple times and she was somewhat interesting the other instances so I was like you know maybe it was just a bad dinner whatever and uh but like while we were bowling like she was just off texting somebody the whole time. Oh. don't know who that like but like there's 20 people there you know partying and bowling and having a good time and she's just sitting by herself at the table and like i kept trying to get her to come out and interact and she didn't and so i was just like okay now you're being completely boring so that's I'm just rude just gonna stop trying that's just yeah bad manners like i mean pretty much i i found that a lot of people i surround myself with like it's a point to have all cell phones away when we're well this dinner. was 2010 where like I, you know, cell phones weren't what cell phones are now. There were smartphones, but it wasn't like no, nobody was on them all the time. Dating apps had not taken off yet. So I know she wasn't on Tinder looking for a better date for me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, she was just like sitting there texting the whole time. I'm like, OK, I'm just going to go have fun with people who are being fun. <laughs> all right. Well, it's a good call on your part. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, I mean, it's wor- like I said, it's worked out it's, so far. It's worked out. Yeah, we've been we've been married. We have two wonderful children. So yeah, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do. You don't need Tinder. Stay away from the Tinder. It's no good. Um, so between 2002 and 2012, more than one third of newlyweds met through an online dating site. Um, so online dating at 34.95 percent beat work, which was 14.9 meeting through friends at 12.4% and school 7.14% combined as the tool for people to meet potential partners. What I need to know from those stats, those don't add up to 100%. So where else are people meeting? Is it just so obscure that they're like, oh, well, we met at the anime convention over here. And then, I don't know, we met like uh, river rafting over here or what like it's it's it just blows my mind that there's a thousand yeah i mean you're never, i don't think you're ever gonna get a hundred percent on anything <laughs> like that but yeah dating is there not a miscellaneous tab there needs to be just and miscellaneous the rest uh but online dating took the cake for they, they uh, probably figured whoever would do the math to add up to see if it would actually add up to a hundred would figure that the rest is miscellaneous Oh God! They're probably like, we don't need miscellaneous. Whoever's going to add this up, they'll know. They'll know. They'll, they're fine. <laughs> well, thank you, Michael. <laughs> you are you are that person. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and so for my last uh, stat, unless I come across something else as we're talking, um, according to Match.com stats, the busiest time of the year, or quote unquote peak season, is between December 26th and February 14th in terms of messages sent and dates arranged. More specifically, Dating Sunday is the most popular day, falling on January 7th in 2017. So this is a couple years ago. Um, it's the, it was the best time to join. Um, online dating users are 52%, 52.4% men and 47.6% women. Um, so just so you guys know, it's about half and half as well. It's not more men or more women that use it. So yeah, if you guys have, have you heard of cuffing season? Cuffing season? Yeah. When you gotta cuff no. your chick? Pretty much. <laughs> but like oh not God. in that way. <laughs> but that's the idea is you cuff yourself to someone else. Like you hook up with someone else, 
<laughs> because everyone's lonely after Christmas and their family members are asking them when they're going to settle down. And yeah. then right. Pretty- desperation runs out after <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day. Exactly. And uh, I've, I've heard a cuffing season extending to like fall and winter time because, you know, you're you, – you have the boys of summer and then it's like, oh, well. Well, no one I'm... wants to go apple picking alone. Exactly. Exactly. And you got to <laughs> be able to go home and tell grandma that you met a really nice lady that, you know, maybe bring her around for Christmas. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's kind of like a biological need too of that almost hibernation that you want to be inside. You want to be warm. You want to be comfortable. You want to be cozy. You want that security. Um, And that comes along with the seasons as well. So that is cuffing season, trying to cuff yourself up with someone else. It's very bizarre and weird, but we do it as these weird (laughs) single people that I alone am in this conversation. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I've been cuffed for eight years. I'm good. Yeah. Pink furry (laughs) cuff. I mean, I'll I'll send you guys. Mine are blue. (laughs) Oh, so sorry. (laughs) Don't mean to project that onto you. <laughs> oh, I thought those were yours, Michael. <laughs> Just saying. Um, yeah, th- that is very interesting. The only other stat I would like to add is that um, the the average courtship before marriage for couples who met online is 18 and a half months, and for couples who meet offline is 42 months. I, I, wow. What do you think? think would cause that's almost four years for meeting offline versus a year and a half um i don't know i i have an idea michael do you have a theory i (laughs) know i'm open to all theories (laughs) okay so i would think that when you're actively searching online you are actively searching like you are ready to be in a relationship if if you're on tinder to be dating rather than hooking up your Ready right. to go. Or, or yeah. Eve, especially something like eHarmony or, or Match.com. Mm-hmm. Like you are actively looking for probably a lifetime relationship. Uh, you're in the market. You're in the market. If you're, if you're paying for whatever you're using, you're definitely ready to, to lock it down. Right. Whereas if you meet casually, you know, you just kind of want to see where things go, take it slow. Like there's, it, you're not, I don't, I don't think there's as much of a sense of uh, urgency or desperate well it might take you a couple months to go on you know three to five dates if you meet in the real world too where because like you you don't automatically know like with with online or or an app you can you're texting all the time basically and you're learning things about each other 24 7 you're talking all the time so when you have that first date it's almost like a third date because you've already talked so much whereas offline dating your first date is your first date and then you might not get another date for another month just because of the way your schedules work out or whatever and you know it's it's i don't know it just seems like online like you said everything's kind of ramped up because everybody's ready to go if they're they're looking for that or even i mean just preparing to ask someone to to go on a date in the real world you don't know Mm -hmm. you you didn't get them to swipe right on your i don't know desk portfolio that you're like you don't send them an email would you swipe right on me is that how things I mean, work i don't know world? i don't know no that's not <laughs> you straight that's, that's what my weird. wife did she came into my office and just swiped right on a folder a folder that was laying on my desk i'm ready to date you. That, that's the new that's the new notes they pass in class they uh they say swipe right or left instead of yes or no um <laughs> i don't know but but that's you know you can you're building up that like you know, are they interested? Are they not interested? Immediately on apps, you know, or you don't know, like, or you or you know either way. Like you know, immediately mm-hmm. they like you or not. Like if you matched or you didn't, or at least they like what you looked like. Yeah. There's at least some there's some foundation going into it, um, rather than you're pretty much building everything from the ground up. Exactly. So I I can see why that would make a little bit more sense. Why it's so much more fast tracked. Now I want to know the success of these relationships. <laughs> Comparatively, I wonder what that looks like in even ten well, years. It was, yeah, it just said courtship before marriage, so it doesn't say what the what happened with the marriages. So, uh, question for you: Did you have any more um, history on dating apps? I do. Okay. I have a lot of history. This is all from PBS.org. Okay. Thank you, PBS, your, for doing the difficult research. Your your research <laughs> is definitely probably more solid than mine, then, because PBS. Uh, you had a lot of good stats. 
Um, so as we said, 1685, first personal ads appear in the Agriculture Journal. 1870 was the first publication of a newspaper specifically for singles. Uh, men oh. would pay 25 cents for an ad in the paper, which is $4.50 in today's money, and women could post for free. That seems really familiar, like ladies' night at clubs. Ladies' night, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> ladies' night in the newspaper. We had a bit of a lull between 1870 and the 1980s. <laughs> wasn't wasn't a lot of technological advancements in the world of dating. Uh, 1980s, the video dating begins with uh, like the the explosion of the VCR. Uh, so people would like record themselves and they'd send it in to someone. And then these people who worked at the place that got all the, the videotapes would send them back out to people. And you'd, it was like Netflix, but for hot people. <laughs> have, well, have, they probably weren't that attractive. Have you watched any of these? <laughs> I've seen like YouTube videos of oh, them. Yeah. yeah. Or like I've seen, I've seen things on TV of something making fun of them. Uh, like Tim, I don't Tim, know that I've seen real ones. Yeah. Tim and Eric, I think did one, like an episode on it. Uh, or a segment on it. It was brilliant, but I have seen a few, and they are <laughs> they are so cringeworthy. It's amazing. I need to watch these. I'll send you a link, Michael. There was <laughs> I was watching Dodgeball for the first time in a really long time the other day because it it doesn't really hold up to 2018. But I was like tired and just wanted something dumb on, and uh, I it was funny because I had just done the research for this, and then one of the guys that is that aver- average Joe's gym, he goes. Oh yeah, you know, I just started video dating, and uh, this is the wife they sent me. <laughs> so he, he met his wife through v- oh, VCR dating. Oh my god, that'd be so much more relevant today. Um, well, so okay, before we get past the eighties, uh, apparently online dating actually began in the nineteen sixties. Um, Harvard undergraduates Jeff Tarr and Von Morrill developed. Um, so it's those Harvard bastards. I know. It's 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 like the precursor to the Facebook people. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. 1966 Operation Match, which uh, received 8,000 applicants, 52% of which were women. They got users to fill out questionnaires on punch cards, and they would then enter the data into these computers, which are like the size of a room, and which right. would then sort the data and provide a match via an algorithm. So, yeah, back to the 1960s, that's when online data – well. Computer dating really started. We can't say online because they're really online. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I had the first instance of in 1988, which were uh, bulletin board systems basically that were posted on the internet. This is actually online bulletin board systems that would allow people to meet and then chat online. Um, Matchmaker, which was the precursor to Match.com, launched uh, on the, a bulletin board system, which was the actual first website dedicated to online dating. Okay. 1980. 1980. Well, the, 19... the year I was born. Oh my yeah. god! I would have been one. I wasn't posting my uh, my stuff on there. <laughs> uh, 1994, Kiss dot com becomes the first modern dating site, sending thousands of uh, Paul Stanley fans in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> also, I didn't say that. Also, sounds like a really bad porn site. <laughs> Like like something they would show on Skinamax. <laughs> Post your ad for free. Yes. Come, come here and watch people kiss. <laughs> this doesn't turn you on. Kiss.com. <laughs> Late night on Kiss.com. You may see a nipple. Who knows? <laughs> but you might not. It's your game. <laughs> Maybe an ass cheek. I don't know today. <laughs> Uh, 1995, Match.com launches. Wow, that yeah. really? Yep. And it says they were the first oh computer God. dating service that allowed users to select each other in real time, whatever that means. I don't know. Oh. In real time, which was probably like actually a six-hour lag. Right. And I'm, just, I'm probably being dial up time. time. <laughs> You've got mail. Yes. I matched with someone on Match.com. <laughs> So, Mom, get off the phone. Speaking of Match.com, it appears that it was the founder of Match.com whose wife left him because she he like made her sign up for it. And, and I'm reading this from Slate.com. Uh, he made her sign up for it and she met somebody through their algorithm that she liked better than her husband, <laughs> the founder of Match.com. You know, it's, it reminds me of the stories yeah. of... Uh, people who have died from their own creations or yes. inventions. I love those. I'm obsessed with those. So this, I'm going to add this to that list of people. That'd probably be a good topic. Too. Yeah. It'd be fantastic. 
Ooh. for a future Ooh. Go Postal. There you Ooh. go. I'm giving you guys all kinds of good Michael, stuff. Michael, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> Got right. it. 2000, Craigslist begins offering free personal ads, and uh, people start dying all over the country because of them. <laughs> okay, and we also have to say yep. 2018, rest in peace, Craigslist personal ads. They are now yep. gone. It makes me very it was, sad. Was it this year? I thought it was last it was year. this year. March, okay. yeah. Because that used to be my favorite thing, would go to, to Craigslist. I would look at them. Oh, my God. They're, they're funny. Misconnections, all of them. Misconnection was the best because <laughs> okay. it was like, was I wearing a blue shirt at Walmart? <laughs> Maybe it was me. <laughs> Misconnections was the best. That was some of the most entertaining stuff. Actually, I, yeah, I would get lost down some rabbit holes there. I actually posted on Misconnections once because there was this guy with this really cool owl tattoo at the local grocery store I went to, and like I really wanted to find out where he got the owl tattoo from. And I'm like, please contact me. <laughs> and then I took it down because I was getting some really creepy responses. I'm like, never mind, this isn't worth it. I'll figure it out. I have an owl tattoo. You want to know where it is? <laughs> Oh, sure the eyes lie. really pop. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. Yes. Craigslist. Goodbye, Craigslist. Damn it. Godspeed. <laughs> um, 2004, plentyoffish.com launches as the first free dating site. Uh, and it's currently the most searched site. And then I would assume because it was the first free one, people still probably consider it as, oh, this is the free one. I'm going to go there first. It's freaking <laughs> vile. I, I was on it for 24 hours. I'm like, nope. One of my friends had a, an account on there. Um, th there was some pretty weird stuff, even for the Internet. Yeah. I mean, you, it's almost like you could put them in and like great like levels tiers of quality and i'd have to probably say i've never done eHarmony or match because i'm a cheap bastard and don't want to pay for them i'm like understandable i yeah if i want to hook up i'll just go on tinder it's fine if i want a lifelong relationship i'll just suffer alone it's, that's fine too um <laughs> i don't want to pay so i'm not gonna pay, pay, pay nineteen ninety five a month for... what? <laughs> plus they're gonna match me with somebody in like mexico how am i gonna meet them yeah exactly so <laughs> I mean, you got your Match.com and your eHarmony. They're pretty good. I feel like you have Tinder, Bumble, um, and then you have kind of like – and th those are the ones where you have to actually match. And then you have like OkCupid, okay Plenty of Fish, Meet Me or Meet Up or something. And like all the ones where people can just message you directly. You don't even have to match. And to me, those are like the lower tier. And you get some weird shit out of those. Like it's very <laughs> Where strange. just anybody can send you messages? Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see that. A lot of owl tattoos coming through there. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Or people looking for owl tattoos, you know. <laughs> oh, it's like Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> well, now Harry Potter's officially ruined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <You're> Edwin. Welcome. <laughs> uh... All right. Uh, and then 2012, the location-based apps become popular, and that's Tinder, Bumble, whatever else exists, because I'm out of touch with dating. Oh, there's so many new ones. It's bananas. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about the strange ones. Yes. Um, this, this was the... I found some weird ones, uh, but this was the, the scariest one. It's called Happen, and oh. it only matches you with users within 250 meter, like a 250 meter radius. Oh, I've been so on that basically, one. you see somebody what? <laughs> you see somebody walk past you, and you're like, "All right, I want to hook up with that person. I'm going to follow them to make sure they stay within my radius." <laughs> it just seemed a bit stalkerish, <laughs> or like, bit. or like this person lives next to me. I don't know their name. I don't know how to talk to them. I'm just going to sit on this app and hope they get on. Maybe I'll leave a business card for the <laughs> app out in the hallway. <laughs> And they'll find it and get on the app eventually. <laughs> it's it's weird. I had zero success on that thing. But I was curious because I worked downtown. Did you get any new stalkers from it? No, I don't think I was on it long enough because I got bored. I'm like, okay, there's fucking no one on this thing. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I don't even know if we're supposed to be cursing on your podcast. I apologize. You already have plenty of time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I curse like a sailor. My bad. Um, So I'm like, I'm not – nothing's going on with these – this – this thing, but I worked downtown, so I was around a lot of business buildings, you know, really tall skyscrapers. So there's lots of people within that 250. Right. That, I, I could see that. So, I guess. and so it also works. The idea was like, 
if you go to your favorite coffee shop all the time and, you know, to people will have similar interests in the places that you go. That was the idea, but you're right. It does get a bit soccer because then you're like, oh, well, this person's really cute. And you start looking for them and then you kind of feel creepy because you're like looking around for this really cute person that's supposed to be nearby all the time. It was Right. It was bizarre. It was it was very odd. I'm like, you know, I don't know how oh, around I am. It this. says this person's always within my circle. Um, I'm just gonna keep walking around until I see her. <laughs> hang out outside. Uh, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> it was very weird. Just hang out outside each building for a different day <laughs> until I see her. Oh, yeah, that was a weird one. Oh. Yes, it is. Uh, a couple others that I found. These were food based. Uh, apps how have i one was called sizzle and uh (laughs) connects bacon lover with other bacon lovers based based on your uh your bacon taste if you like turkey bacon or pork bacon uh, if you like it crispy or not crispy Uh, it's actually owned by oscar meyer and they said they kind of made it as a joke but people are on it and using it also how am i not on this (laughs) i didn't even know there were food-based apps this sounds so up my alley and then the other one was called Salad Match, and it's only for people going to one New York City restaurant chain called Just Salad. So it it they they said they created it for like if you're going to the salad, like if you only have your 20 minutes for lunch, you live in New York City, and the salad place is right ac- across from where you work, and you want to go get lunch with somebody else, you can find that person on there based on your salad preferences, basically. So you know when <laughs> you know when they're going to lunch, when you're going to lunch, and you can match it up and go get salad with them at the restaurant chain. I mean, that's kind and of that, cute. It's also kind of stalkery. It's also kind of stalkery. Again, <laughs> this person goes and gets salad every day. Let me just figure out when they're going. Okay. Salad. I better stalk people. <laughs> Dating apps is a very good way, apparently. <laughs> Um, there's a dating app called Bristler that I signed up for, and it is specifically for women who appreciate good beards and mustaches. Oh, I saw that one in my research. Uh-huh. Uh, it's all right. And, but I got inspired because there's this barber shop in town called Whiskey Neat Barbershop, and they, it's specifically for men who are, you know, have very luscious locks and are bearded, and they serve you whiskey neat that's the idea you get a a shot of whiskey basically when you go in but like good whiskey well they post on instagram these gorgeous men getting groomed and i'm like god you guys need to start a dating app through like your instagram or something you could just post pictures of the single men you've just groomed and then match them up with other people i don't know i i felt like there was something coming out of that but apparently i'm not the first to think of this the salad place did it first yes (laughs) And the beard place did it for just the beards. Yeah, and if you combine the two, it's like a match made in salad bearded heaven. <laughs> I suppose so. I guess so. That sounds amazing, <laughs> Carla. Why are you still single? <laughs> oh, fun fact. Why are you not finding all these bearded salad eaters? Because <laughs> d- there's not an app for it yet. We need to combine the, the forces. There we go. <laughs> get this going guys also, uh michael did you find any strange ones oh did you have another one sorry oh no i was just gonna say uh also i have to move to new york for the salad chain so that's true yeah, yeah. i'm scared anyway oh right well isn't there a salad chain in nashville i'm sure there it's, is not with an app uh i was gonna say it's nashville honey this is the south salad what we have a salad. I live in Florida. We have one salad place, but it it's South Florida, so it doesn't really count. It's like, yeah, South Florida doesn't count as the South. You know, I don't even think Vancouver has a salad place. There are plenty of vegan pizza places, but there's not a salad place. Because if you think. could get vegan pizza, wouldn't you rather have that than a salad? Yeah. Wouldn't you rather I mean, have pretty much anything no. <laughs> than a salad? Uh, Fair enough. Uh, I I don't have any strange apps although i just did a uh search and i saw gluten-free singles which is fun <laughs> that could be important though you don't you don't want your it your mate be. to get uh you know cause you an allergic reaction it's yeah that's fair um but i <clears throat> my one of my friends just went down to florida on like a, an annual family and friend vacation trip and apparently 
uh, one of his gay friends was down there and he matched up with this couple who happened to be living next door to where they were renting their vacation house. And he was like, I'm going to go have a threesome with this married couple. No. <laughs> and uh, that's grinder. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Fun time. Very. So now we're into the personal experience port. Unless we have more strange apps. Nope. Anything else? I mean, there's no? like coffee meets bagel, and there's uh, like the the ones you'd expect. Like uh, I had a yeah. friend that's Jewish, so she was on the Jewish uh, dating app, and that kind of. Yeah, stuff. there's a lot of like specific interest groups, which again we kind of talked about that. Like those are kind of like, there's one for like people who are into equestrian, and like <laughs> I get that because that's a that's a lifestyle that like you got to be pretty dedicated to. And rich. I mean, because let's face it, us poor people are not owning horses. No, oh. there's, there's like sugar daddy apps, and there, there's all kinds of good stuff out there. So if you, if you're in, <laughs> if you're in, you know, if you need a nap, there's one out there for you probably. Even if you like salads. <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah. So personal stories. Wow. Gosh. I'll start with mine because I only have one. Um. I like like I said, my friend used plenty of fish um, when I first moved down to Florida and he was on it a lot. And so I created a a dummy profile for him. Um, He's Filipino. And uh, for Halloween that year, he went as Captain America, but like he changed all the stuff to Filipino (laughs) symbology. So he was Captain Filipino. (laughs) Um, So I created a dating app for Captain Filipino and filled it out with a bunch of like Asian stereotypes. <laughs> I never got any matches. It was rough. Oh. I was very sad. Well, that's actually um there's a reason for that. Because another fun people don't like Asian stereotypes. No, they don't like Asians in general. According to one of the stats I found, <laughs> Asian men and uh black women are the two uh kind of categories of people that get the least amount of traction on these apps. Hmm. So, so I, I made it too Asian. Yeah. Sorry, man. Oh, there you go. Couldn't, couldn't help you if out there. I could turn <laughs> <time. laughs> okay. That's my only personal story. Um, so let's, do you have a funny story that you'd like to pull out first? Uh, personal or just one mm. that we found? No personal. Uh, and then we'll do a story from the internet too later. Okay. Um, well, uh, funny. Maybe. Well, you tell me how funny this is. It's insane. Uh, <laughs> so I matched with this guy. This was on Tinder. And this was before I was really, like, really selective about who I was swiping right on. I'm now one of those picky people where it's mostly no's. Um, but I, he, he was kind of shy, but he seemed really nice. I'm like, well... This could go 50-50. Either it's going to be really awesome or it's going to be miserable. So what the hell? It's just lunch. So he said, I want to take you out for this for a, for a lunch. I want to treat you to lunch. So to me, that's like I want to pay for you because, you know, yes. I'm a modern woman. I don't mind going Dutch. I don't mind paying, whatever. Uh, but if someone says I want to treat you or I want to take you out, like to me, that says you're paying. Cool. Agreed. No big deal. Um, and so he's coming from a ways away. He's like 40 minutes from where we were meeting. And we were meeting at a burger place in Nashville. We get there and I'm like, all right, he kind of looks like his picture. So that's always a good sign. Um, So we're sitting there kind of quiet and I can tell he's pretty, you know, socially awkward. I'm like, so what do you like to do for fun? And he says, oh, I like to sit in the corner of my room and surf the internet. I'm like, so basically look at porn. Okay. Um, I I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking in my head. Okay. Um, And he lived with his parents and was unemployed. And I'm like, I get that, but still, I'm like, you're also almost 30 and okay. Um, So things are going on and and we were talking about road trips. And he's like, yeah, I took a road trip to Texas. I'm like, oh yeah, I really want to visit some more Texas. He's like, let's go on a road trip to Texas together. I'm like, I literally just met you. I am. That might be a bit fast. I'm not going on a road trip with you. Unless you're Michael, of course. Then you go on road trips for your first time. Right, right. (laughs) It's a thing you do. (laughs) Don't knock it till you try it, guys. Fair enough. I've been on plenty of bad road trips with people I've dated much longer than one time, and it 
Yeah, I feel like not gonna if you can road trip with someone, that's a pretty good fit, to be honest, to be stuck in a confined yes. space with them. So I was going to tell that to you, Michael, earlier. So, yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> sure. And he's like, oh, yeah. And then there's this time I took this road trip to uh, the coast of Alabama or something. And he's like, I got there, saw the ocean, then I said, I want to go back. I'm like, okay. Uh, he said, but I, I needed to sleep first. So I locked myself in the trunk of my car to sleep. Seems like a bad plan. And I'm like, um, <laughs> weren't you a little bit claustrophobic? Like I would, I could handle that. You know, I'm not super claustrophobic, but that would be a bit much for me. And he's like, oh no, I actually do this to every car I own. I like to lock myself in the trunk of my car. And he's like, what's that? I'm not a claustro, I'm not claustrophobic. I'm claustro, oh, a claustrophiliac. You like small space. He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, yeah, it's one of my fun things I like to do. I like to break out of the trunk of my car. Now, most people know that there's that uh, release the latch. latch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's release latch in the trunk of your car. For people that don't know, it's in there. Take a look. If you ever get locked in trunk, most modern cars you can break out of. Fun, helpful tip. Um, so I'm like, okay. Uh, and so he looks at me dead in the face and he's like, would you like me to lock you in the trunk of my car? And I'm just, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. Did you do it? No, hell no. I, I'm like, uh, that, he could have taught you how to get out first. That was very much a, uh, please bring the check immediately. This just got really weird. <laughs> so, okay. So the check comes. It's not What'd open. What'd you have for lunch? Uh, a burger and a beer. I needed a beer for that one. Um, good choice. So, uh, <laughs> so the, the check comes and he's like, well, I have a hundred dollar bill or I have $18 in cash. And he basically kind of said he didn't want to break the $100 bill. It was like a $30 lunch. Like, it was not expensive. I didn't, like, order the lobster. Um, and I'm just like, just give me the 18 and I'll pay for the rest. It's fine. I'm like, it just after everything, it was really weird. So then we were walking out to the car. It was in bright daylight. So this was lunch, like I said. It wasn't – and it was a pretty busy parking lot, thank God. And we're walking out. I'm like, oh, yeah, I felt like I had a million browser tabs open in my head. He's like, oh, yeah, I had a browser tabs open – and it had Nickelodeon and porn going on at the same time. And it was like 13-year-old me's wet dream. And I'm like, you literally just oh. brought up porn twice on this first date. <laughs> uh, I'm like, okay, I need to go. And he's like, are you sure you, you – And he, oh, and we go to the car. And he literally opens up the trunk. <laughs> and he says, this is the trunk. And I'm like, I need to go right now. I got a lot of errands. I got to Skype my parents. I got shit to do. I'm sorry. I got to go. So I leave. <laughs> and he texts me later. Oh, I got home safe what are you up to? I'm like, oh, I'm just still running errands. And he's like, well, if I had known, uh, I would have come with you. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't know you. You're not running errands with me. What, the, what is wrong with you? So I, at that moment I said, look, it was really nice meeting you. You're a very sweet person, but I don't see this going anywhere. I'm like, but Hey, at least I can say, you know, someone offered to lock me in the trunk of their car on a first date, as I'm saying now. And he's like, Again, just not getting the hint that this is weird. He says, oh, well, if you ever change your mind, let me know ahead of time. The offer's still open. So I can clean out the trunk of my car. Like, I'll put some obstacles in there for you. Oh, my God. So that was the weirdest first date I've ever been on. Uh, that is funny and a little terrifying. It's not quite terrifying because you didn't get in the trunk. Good, good job on you. Yeah, it, I mean, if if it <laughs> there was other circumstances, it definitely would have been a lot more terrifying. Like if we were in a more remote location or like late at night or something, like they would have been much scarier. But uh, I think he was just that clueless. I really do. I think there. Was, yeah. I don't think it was anything. It, it seemed but, like it. Yeah. Mentioning porn twice and then trying to lock you in his trunk is yeah, that's probably a yeah. red flag. I would say. Yeah, and the fact that he lived in middle of nowhere couple, tennessee uh i'm like yeah no mm -mm, i'm not no you know those backwoods way too well not happening uh-uh <laughs> um so yeah that was gonna be my next question if you cared to divulge any uh any bad situations or was that the worst situation that you've been in through a dating app um Okay, well, real quick before I get to the and bad. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have no, to. No, you're fine. I'm I open book. Out of, I have no shame. I have a podcast. Of course, I have no shame. Um, I have a podcast and I have plenty of shame. <laughs> um, I can't have shame on my podcast at this point. Um, so there was this other guy I started dating. And this one's really quick. But we just had this series of horrible events. And the, I wrote down the four um, at each date. Like something happened right before the date that like was just horrible 
awful. So my, the first one I said, my broken face, which is from a bad date before. So I'll elaborate on that. But basically I had this really horrible kind of uh, scab or scar under my nose. And um, like I still had some bruising on my cheekbone. And so I warned him about it. He was also a paramedic firefighter. And I'm like, just so you know, like I'm not coming exactly like my profile picture. This is what I look like right now. It wasn't horrible, but I, I was really self-conscious about it. So then everything went really well. This was a Mario Kart date. So everything went really, really, really well. So we had planned to have another date the next weekend and kind of maybe take things a little bit further. Well, he gets there and he's like, I got to tell you something. I uh, I cut myself uh, shaving. I'm like, okay. And he's like, not my face. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So then, the, so I mean, things worked out. It was fine. So then the next one. We were about, we we're going to go play pool. And I had been building some like industrial size shelving that day at work. And when I had hammered one of the, or like used a mallet on one of the beams and it fell off and hit me in the head. So it's like giant, like goose egg on my head. So I text him, like, by the way, <laughs> just so you know, I got basically got a concussion at work today. And then we were hanging out for probably what was the most recent time we hung out. Uh, he messages me and says, I'm going to have to cancel. I think my, t- my cat broke its tail. And if it has, it has to be amputated because there's really nothing they can do to fix a cat's tail. So <laughs> came to find out his cat had broken his tail and it actually was amputated. Like he sent me a picture and everything. Like not the amp- – like, you know, after it healed. But yeah. Um, <laughs> it just sent you like the decapitated the tail, tail piece, not right. the actual cat. <laughs> no. I, you know, I really would have appreciated that. Um to be honest, because I've been amazing. But so we just had this horrible series. Uh, funny thing is we're actually really good friends to this day. Like there's just no interest there anymore. But he's he is a good friend of mine now. So uh, that was a, a fun uh, series of unfortunate events, kind of, except for maybe the cat. Yeah, it's bad for the cat, but yeah. fun for you. Okay, so bad experience being my broken face. Um, I was actually drugged on a date and it wasn't my date, which was the weird thing. I went to go meet. It's probably better though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went. To, I guess not. I went to go meet this guy, and he was like, "Hurry up, get here. I'm waiting. Get there." And then he's like, "Well, I'll be down in like 20 minutes." And then like 45 minutes later, so I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna start drinking." Well, the bartender was acting really weird. He'd like slipped and fallen right in front of me. He'd mixed up my drink order. Someone else had gone in to like, or had come to check to make sure he'd put in my food order because I didn't want to drink on an empty stomach. Um. He was just all over the place. Well, I think I got someone else's drink, and it may have been drugged. Um, so I had someone else's roofie drink. And so this date went really poorly. I was not into him. Uh, he ended up having adult braces, which, I mean, good for people wanting to improve their smile. But it was just, again, not something I was expecting. I'm like, whoa, okay, um, sure. Not what you look like in your profile picture. Also, you're five foot four. Also, just like this checklist of things that just put me way off and also having to wait for him for 45 minutes. Um, and then apparently on those drugs, you can get a little bit more aggressive. So I was a little bit more forward and uh, with what I was saying instead of like, you know, trying to be nice and polite. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm not enjoying this. I'm going to go. And I got to another bar, which was not like me. And uh, I had a beer and then don't remember anything afterwards. And they put me in a lift home, thank God. And I ended up smashing my face on a curb. Uh, oh. Don't remember uh, at all. And woke up the next morning with this like awful, swollen, bruised, cut up face. Not a recollection of anything that happened. Not hungover. So I wasn't drunk. Because I'd had like two drinks in that whole time. So that was not enough to make me, you know, fall on my face and not remember it. Um, so yeah, that was an interesting foray into online dating of... Yeah. Just being careful well, on where you go and yeah. It was awful. So yes. Yeah, I'm glad it worked out for you yeah. and you're mostly safe besides yeah. the broken face. I'm like that of all the things that could have happened, I'll take that. <laughs> so Do you uh Yeah, you're not yay. Uh do you have like a, a go to get out of jail free card basically on the date? Like do you have the the friend calling you, anything like that, or do you just stick it out until the end? Always. Oh, um, I do stick it out. There have been a few times where I've, I've tried like to think of things to get out of a date. Like again, one of these dates, it wasn't going well. He had the personality of a banana slug. We ran out of things to talk out about after 15 minutes. 
Uh, but he had given me a ticket to go see Muse and 30 Seconds to Mars. Gross. And I'm like, if what? I love Muse. I, I, yeah. I don't give a ton. Uh, Muse is fine. I don't like 30 <laughs> I don't, Seconds I don't either, Mars. but the show is amazing. I'll put it out there. Jared Leto could put on a show. I was really impressed. My, my wife's favorite band is 30 Seconds to Mars, and I don't think they're very That's, good. No, I don't think so either. She's secretly, not so secretly in love with Jared Leto pre like complete weirdo he is now but yeah no that's fair. still kind of holds a flame for him <laughs> that's fair no like he puts on a good show music is awful it's yeah but muse is amazing it puts on an even better show so i'm like i've, I've never seen muse on my bucket list i can do this i can make it through this and the good news is at a concert you don't have to talk <laughs> right so i'm like so you just have to get there i'll just get there so yeah i, I made it through it um and got to see an awesome show and had that amazing experience and uh, actually paid a $50 Uber ride to get out of not having to be in the car with him for an extra 25 minutes. It was that bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but I will stick it out because, hey, you never know. Sometimes people just get off on the wrong foot. They put you in the trunk of their car. Or, or that know. too. I mean, you know, if I ever decide that that's a thing, then, you know, I know who to call. <laughs> you know where to go. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's wrap up with, um, uh, something you guys do on your show that I like is you always find like an interesting story from the internet or from the world and you share it and talk about it. So I wanted to, for each of us to bring one of those and we can talk about it. Uh, did, did you guys do that? Did you do your homework? We did. We did. Oh, good. Michael, you, I, I feel like I haven't heard your voice enough, so I'm going to let you go first again. It's okay. I, I'm not much. I'm more of a listener. You're a very good listener. Most of the time. Actually, I don't know if you're a good listener. You could have no idea what we've been talking about this whole time. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about macaroni and cheese? Yeah. Always. We're always. Did you find, did you find an interesting story from the internet about mac and cheese? I did. I'm so this, hungry. This woman, her name is like the Barefoot Contessa, and she just put like a, a turn of pepper into her mac and cheese, and she said it's going to be spicy. I don't know if that was interesting. <laughs> a turn. <laughs> no. It wasn't. It wasn't interesting. Uh, yes. It kind of reminds me of uh, when you were talking, Calvin, about uh, that date you were on when you met your wife-to-be uh, and how she was just on her phone the entire time. Mm -hmm. So this is from a user, Susie9mm. Um a few years ago, I had a couple that seemed to be either on a blind date or a first date through the internet. He showed up a little earlier and got the best table next to my section. She shows up, sits down, and I immediately ask you gets to pause on. For a second. How do you know what the Ooh. best table in a restaurant is? <laughs> I guess the the waitress How? working there would know, I suppose. But like, yeah, if this guy's showing up trying to impress it, and he's like, "Give me your best table." I'm not going to know the difference. I'm sorry. I think it's yeah. it's for people that go to really nice restaurants. I've I've been to nice restaurants. I still don't know <laughs> that there's like a best seat in the house. I like I don't get it. I, I, I I'm not I'm not a very worldly person. I'll admit, but like things like that just baffle me. I don't think you want the one right next Maybe. to the kitchen with like the doors going I, open and close, or next to the bathrooms or something. I could see that. Yeah. I could see how there are bad tables. I just don't see how like this table in this aisle is better than the table <laughs> one over in the aisle right on the other side of the half wall. Anyway, yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. My definition of the best table in the house is if it's slightly secluded, that's all I care about. Yes. If I can have some privacy, I, that, that would be good. I could see that. So maybe it was a little removed. Maybe. Who knows? All right. Um. So... Uh, she shows up, sits down, and imme immediately gets on her phone. Now, he wasn't a bad-looking guy, but she was still a good deal hotter than him. <laughs> for, the, for the next 40 minutes, I overhear him trying to start conversation with her, giving him one-word responses with her eyes still glued to her phone. I'm yo-yoing between finding this funny, sad, and downright angering. During one of my pissed off waves, I decide to throw caution to the wind and I brought him a coloring book and some crayons and just said, here, you look bored. <laughs> For a split second, it looks like I've made a huge mistake. Then this massive grin crosses his face. He picks up a crayon and starts going to town 
on this coloring book. It was amazing. The spiteful slash energetic joy on his face made my week. The best part, the date now decides to put down her phone and fish for some attention. And every damn question she asks, he answered with one word responses while blasting through his coloring book. I just started like she eventually gets help pissed. with the word search or the, uh, <laughs> the, the word scramble. Be like, what, what do you think these this, this word is? Do you unscramble these letters? <laughs> this is really important. I can't get to the end of the maze. <laughs> help uh she eventually gets pissed and wanders off he pays his tab and comes to find me to say thank you we laugh and joke a few minutes then he asks for my number unfortunately i was dating someone at the time but i think about him every once in a while that was an that is a good story awesome story i think if i ever were i i am a bit beyond working in the service industry at this point but I think that's something I could totally do. I, um, Poetic yes, justice. Very much so. Yeah. And also to the yeah. people who are on their phones all the time, like, screw you. Like, if I'm with someone and I'm having, even if it's bad, like, you just don't be on your phone. That's just bad, bad manners. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it bothers me. Like, my wife and I will sit at home and be on our phones while we eat dinner sometimes. But usually if we have a chance to go out to dinner, we make sure we put our phones away unless we're specifically looking something up to settle an argument or right. uh, Google. Like, we're like, oh, we should go to this place and we want to look up and, you know, see what prices are or something like that. Then we'll do that. Um, but like as far as just faces buried in the phone, we we try very hard not to. Right. Absolutely. Like yeah. to the Google is like the most important three <laughs> three word sentence in any like relationship because that I mean, you know, you got to settle. Well, you can't just sit there and argue over it the whole time. You got to. You got to see who's right. Exactly. It's important. <laughs> All right. Well, hmm. Calvin, do you have one? I have. I had two, but I took one off because we're running long and I already deleted it. So I can't get it back. You've lost it forever. I'm oh, sorry. No. <laughs> um, I, I did realize when searching for like funny stories that most of them were from women about men because men are idiots. Um, and yep. I, I just, I have no, I, I, Michael, yours was actually the other way around, which was a nice refresher. Um, yeah. but like most of the time, like what, why are men so stupid? <laughs> I, I can't even imagine. Like I, I was never, cause before my wife, the only girlfriends I ever had were in high school and college, which it's very easy to meet and to find things to talk about. So there wasn't a lot of like making conversation out of thin air. You always have a class to talk about or what the, the school's football team is doing. Like there's always something to talk about when you're in college together or in high school together. Right. Um, I, I just don't understand what goes through grown adult men's minds trying to strike up a conversation with women and why they would think women would want to listen to what they say. Well, I mean, I have a whole podcast <laughs> about it. So listen for long enough. We may figure it out. Okay. On We Too. I'll check that out. Yeah. I believe yes. in you. Check all, out We Too, also Carla's <laughs> other podcast. Very good stuff, I'm told. Um, so mine, actually, the the first one I had was a, a woman about a man, but the second one's about a man, a man about a woman, too. And uh, I had to pick it because it holds a special place in my heart because it starts with, I was messaging with a girl I'll call Ashley. And I dated an Ashley, and every Ashley I've come across from my friends dating, they've all been crazy. <laughs> So it on, this one only fit with my um, preconceived notions of an Ashley. I'm sorry if there are any Ashley listeners, but you might be crazy. <laughs> and there might not be anything you can do about it. Your name may be cursed. Um, it's not me. So, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just your name. <laughs> Change your name. You might be okay. Um so it's, I was messaging with a girl I'll call Ashley. It was one of those conversations that immediately took off and we were talking for at least four hours straight. We decided to get to go get dinner and she was even better in person. At the end of this date, we start making out and she stops us before we get too far so, and says she's not ready for that, which I respect. Sorry, I'm terrible at reading out loud. So just bear with me. Uh, when I got home, she texted me saying that I was just going to use her had we had sex, calling me a pig. That's nice. Next day, I get a text from Ashley's phone asking if I knew where she was and if I was the last person to talk to her. Her friend went to her house where Ashley had apparently left her phone and her car and the front door was wide open. 
So I told this mystery person to call the cops. When she refused, I said that I would, and lo and behold, Ashley shows up. I had just gone out for a walk. Didn't know you cared so much about me, she texted. Uh, LOL. The next day, I go to work. I usually leave my phone in my truck until lunch, so when I went out for lunch at noon, I had 115 new texts and 48 missed calls. What? Yep, that's it. Oh. I was done. So I blocked her number and assumed that was it. Wrong again. She knew where I worked and the rough time I got off work, which is almost an hour and a half from where she lived. She tried following me home. I took her a roundabout way and eventually uh, and ran a few red lights and eventually managed to lose her. Oh my so, god. So first she tries to set up that he almost that he murdered her by just leaving her house completely and leaving him as the last person she spoke to, and then she turns it around and won't leave him alone. Yes. Because he called the cops. Uh so stalking can happen to men too. That is the oh, PSA. Yeah. Oh my god. And it remind me it reminded me of my former Ashley, who is I I do not look back on lovingly at all. Ashley, if you're listening. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Putting it mildly. Um, I, I would, in college, I would play basketball for about three hours, three times a week. Had the whole time I went to school there, the whole time I knew her, this was something I did. Three times a week, I'd go play basketball for almost three hours because, like, I wasn't playing the whole time because you'd get on and off the court as it comes. Um, but I'd usually be there for about three hours. I'd leave my phone in my bag, wouldn't, wouldn't really check it. One day, uh, probably two months into us dating, I had like 12 missed calls from her after being there for only an hour and a half. And it was voicemails and texts saying, what are you doing? I know you're not playing basketball all this time. I know you're not doing I'm like, first of all, she worked at, at the gym. It was the on-campus gym. She worked there. So she knew people who worked there who have seen me there for long periods of time many days already. She has seen me there for that long of time. She has been with me when I've been there for that long of time. But on this day, she decided I was I was the crazy one for playing basketball for an hour and a half and called me 30 times in the, the hour and a half I'd been there. So I just turned my phone off and went and kept playing <laughs> and yet continued to date her for some reason. Well, we were, we're, we were of different minds. Yeah. Yes, back young then, and dumb. Right? 19 year old me was not the smartest person. I'll admit. <laughs> I mean, again, you're thinking with other, other things. So, you know. It's fair enough. I, I don't what, even know if arm? I was doing that, to be honest. Yeah, maybe you weren't thinking at all. <laughs> that yeah, <laughs> that that that's more close to it. Is... And you you spoke of your wonderful road trip, Michael. I had an absolutely road trip from hell with her that I'm not going to go into here because it it doesn't need to be relived at this moment. But uh, that's I can just imagine yeah. how hellish that it, was. It was not good. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Do you, do you have something to brighten our day after that, now that I'm back in my dark place? Well, I do. <laughs> um, but, Michael, I want to ask, should I read the good or the bad? Because I have two stories from the same person, just flip sides of the coin. You know, there was a good story that ended well and one that ended poorly. So, uh, Michael, I'll let you choose and I'll read, read it. Or you can choose, Calvin, your choice. Well, I was going to say read the bad one first and then we'll end on the good one. Okay. <clears throat> the bad. The go. one that went down in flames happened last week, and it was amazing. They were both very nice to me, but not to each other. He comes in first, sits down, asks for a recommendation on wine, takes it, and tells me he's waiting for a blind date. Again, I'm like, oh, fuck yes, because we're slow as hell and I'm bored. She, com she comes in and tells <laughs> Okay, I have to stop you again, because I didn't realize this was from like a server. I thought this was uh, like somebody waiting on a threesome. Oh, when you started sorry, the story. sorry, no, I should have <laughs> somehow I got on Reddit on this thread of uh to, uh serve like my servers, servers, servers. Yeah. yeah. But it's about servers talking about Tinder dates. So so this is from the point of view of a server. Now uh, it makes more sense than yes. a, a guy waiting on a threesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe less exciting. Okay. So she comes in and tell me tells me she's meeting someone. He's the only person there. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's in the bar. She was super nice to me, so was he, and they were both attractive middle-aged people, so I thought the date would go at least that the date would at least go well enough that it wouldn't end in a dumpster fire. But no. He kept drinking and talking. I couldn't eavesdrop on the whole thing because other tables ended up coming in. But the first thing I caught was him talking about his teenage kids, and she replied that she didn't have kids because she never wanted them. But now she's okay with the idea. I took this to mean she doesn't have children of her own, 
but she's not crossing men with children off her list. Apparently, that's not how he took it because he replied, no fucking joke. So now you want kids, but you're too old? Even my jaw almost hit the floor from behind the bar, and the look on her face was priceless. He must have realized what he did because he looked up at me and was like, can I get another? And then pounded his glass of wine. (laughs) She managed to shake off the rude comment, and they were talking more. I left to go take care of another table, and when I came back, they had started arguing because he drunkenly started talking about his mom cheating on his dad, and she was not having his stance on it. Apparently, he only thought it'd be okay if it was the other way around, but not his mom cheating. She went off about how childish he was and how disgusting that was to say and turned to me and asked me for the bill. My dumbass was like, together or separate? He just kind of stared at the floor, and she said, together, honey. So I went and got their bill and the argument uh, over who was going to pay went down and she was having none of it. She yelled at him about his opinion some more and handed me her credit card. I rang it up and they left separately. In the end, it worked out for me because she tipped me 30%, but he came back in and gave me another 20 in cash for, quote unquote, having to deal with someone like her because he's sure she didn't tip well. (laughs) so many things about this story i'm just like oh for fuck's sake so that was the bad all right so from our uh, oh i have to say this is from sailor dash mouth on reddit who is brilliant i just love the way she writes it's fantastic the good i'll start with my favorite good tinder day i've witnessed i have this regular she's a super nice middle-aged i think this person's like 18 or 19 because everyone's middle-aged but they could all be like in their late 20s. 20, yeah. <laughs> She's a nice, super nice middle-aged lady, and she comes in once or twice a week and just kind of hangs out reading a book, drinking wine, and will occasionally order food. She never spends a ton, but she's so nice. I don't mind she takes up a table for herself for hours on end and only orders a couple glasses of house wine. Anyway, one night, this very attractive man comes in, and he's kind of nervous and wearing a lot of cologne. So I'm like, boom, first date, let's eavesdrop on this shit. He sits down orders a beer and tells me he's waiting for a blind date. I'm already stoked because we're slow and I'm bored, but I get even more stoked when I see my regular walk in and go up to him and introduce herself. I'm like secretly praying to the date gods that this, I, that this goes well because this dude is cute and seems very nice and she's rad all the way around. They end up sitting there talking for about an hour, slowly drinking. I come up to ask if they want another drink and he looks at her and asks her what she wants to do and she said she'd love to stay and talk more. I'm like, yes. So I go get their drinks and when I come back, they're holding hands. So I'm like, double yes. Eventually, she comes up to me in the server station and all shyly asks me what I think of him. Because we're on a first date. I told her what I thought and she agreed. After a few hours, they leave and she doesn't come back for a month. I got kind of worried because I'm like, I hope she's okay. The next time they come in, they're both tan as hell because apparently they decided to go on a three-week vacation together because the date went that well and the whole thing really tatered my tots. (laughs) So apparently this whole like, let's go on vacation together after just going on your first date is a thing. Hundo P. It probably shouldn't be a frequent thing, but that's, that, that is a good way to end a first date, I would say. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. I am no longer in the dating world. I am dating someone, but I did meet him on um, a dating app. I met him on Bumble, which the premise of Bumble, it was actually started by a woman who worked at Tinder. But she left Tinder and sued them for sexual harassment and started her own dating app. But uh, women have to message first and they have 24 hours to message. And if they don't, the match goes away completely. So they're not like getting this barrage of messages from men that they actually really don't necessarily want to talk to. Um, And I let the match go by with this guy. I was just like, I don't know. I don't really have time, whatever. whatever. And uh, he paid to renew the match. So that I could message him. So I got another 24 hours to message him. And I did. And we ended up going out for like putt-putt golf. And then, you know, throughout the whole night, it was just like. Good first date. It was awesome. And then we went and played some pool. And then we went stargazing on his back porch. And like like throughout this one night. So he was just like, do you want to keep talking? Do you want to keep going? And ever since then, it's been really lovely. So that's that's been my good experience from a dating app. Yeah. You can have success out there, people listening to this podcast, hoping to to find some goodness in the uh, 
dating app world. Yeah, stay away from the trunks. Never yeah. give up. Yeah, don't don't uh, get in anybody's trunk that you meet on dating apps. So. <laughs> if you're in a long term, you know, committed relationship and you want to get in somebody's trunk, go right ahead. <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend doing it on a first date. <laughs> I don't know that I would recommend it after nine years. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Michael, you guys are like over six feet tall, so it would be difficult. <laughs> Barely fit in the car. <laughs> oh, man. Well, now that we've put your podcast in the gutter, along with ours. <laughs> I don't think it's in the gutter. Okay. I think it's great. No, I, I've really, really, really enjoyed this. Like, I never know how to end these things. I don't know about you. I'm really bad. No, yeah, it's difficult. That's why I do the, the segment afterwards, because it's easier to just, like, talk to myself until I finish than uh, say goodbye to other people. Fair enough. Right. But uh, I do <laughs> appreciate you guys coming on and talking about dating apps with me and enlightening me on the dating app, app statistics and uh, all the fun stories out there. Um. You know, would love to have you back another time if we can find another exciting topic like this one. <laughs> I'm sure we can. <laughs> well, we have two. I know. Well, yeah, narrow, we've already got so... two ideas from this. So <laughs> I'm I, dating app was just the first thing that popped in my head because I think I was in the throes of dating at the time. So <laughs> yeah, because we we had been talking about it for a while, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so when we finally got the chance to record, so. Um, yeah, just thank you for, for coming on and, uh, being a part of it and taking the time to talk with me. I, I always enjoy talking to new people and, uh, getting them on my show. Well, thank you so much, Calvin. Yeah. Thanks for having us. It's been so much thank fun. You. Um, make sure you check out the go postal podcast and the new we too podcast from, uh, from Carla. Indeed. Thank you so much. All right. Do you want to tell more about the We Too podcast before we go? Because nobody got to hear about that. Uh, so We Too is a collaboration with Kate uh, from Ignorance Was Bliss, which is also a fabulous podcast if you're into uh, forensic psychology uh, and true crime. But basically, We Too is exploring uh, gender inequality issues right now in our world. Uh, so Kate kind of brings the psychology aspect. I bring more history uh, and anthropology to it. And uh, we don't get angry and ranty yet. So <laughs> yeah, come check us out. It's, it's a very- It doesn't come to like episode 25. Right. Well, I don't know. We have our moments <laughs> where I feel like Kate's <laughs> ramping up, but um, it's it's good. And it's a hard discussion to have. You know, it's pretty heavy. So don't expect barrel of laughs. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're not cracking too many jokes because we do have some- uh, some very vulnerable people on our podcast and it's a, a very hard topic, but it's important. So it's something I'm really passionate about. Awesome. So check that out. Check out go postal. Always listen to a podcast about something. Thanks guys. Ciao. Bye. Hey, this is an ad about something audible to be exact. Audible is a great way to catch up on all your favorite stories while on the go. Audible includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, news, comedy, and more from the leading audiobook publishers. I've been using Audible for years on my daily commute to catch up on some of my favorite fantasy stories including Harry Potter, The Once and Future King, and A Song of Ice and Fire narrated by the Guinness World Record holder Roy Dotrice. Uh, I also love getting Audible's recommendations. Just recently, Audible recommended that I read Armada and Ready Player One by Ernest Klein and spectacularly narrated by Will Wheaton. I listened to both of these stories and loved them both because the narration by Will Wheaton just made the stories even more enjoyable and immersive than if I would have read them on my own. So if you love books, I've got some great news for you. Right now, for my listeners, you can get any audiobook you want from Audible for free when you sign up for your free trial of Audible using audibletrial.com slash a podcast about something. Again, to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash a podcast about something. Thanks for listening. And now it's time for the two-minute two minute episode. episode. But first, listen to this promo from one of my fellow podcasters. Are there real ghosts in Ms. Pac-Man? Are satanic secrets hidden in your Excel spreadsheet? Did Pokemon cause a spike in suicides in Japan? Hello gamers, I'm Tim Gibson, host of the Cabinet Podcast. I look at the strange occurrences behind your favorite video games. A new weird creepy story drops every two weeks on Wednesdays. 
That's the Cabinet Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and other major podcast platforms. So I was having a bit of a hard time thinking of a two-minute ISO to go with today, um, but I'm going to begrudgingly talk about Better Call Saul and uh, the, the season that just finished recently. I caught up on it, and like I'm pretty lukewarm on this show. I really liked Breaking Bad. It's one of my favorite, you know, drama TV series of all time, but Breaking Bad, uh, sorry, Breaking Bad is really good. Better Call Saul has been very bland. Um, my wife and I, in season one, we started watching it together because we liked, uh, Breaking Bad so much. So we started watching it together after season one. She's cut out on it, but I've stayed with it, hoping it will get interesting, hoping something will happen. And it's really, it just feels like it's not happening. Um, you know, she'll still, she'll ask me every once in a while what's going on on the show. And I'll say, you know, why do you care? Um, you're not going to catch back up on it at this point. It's four or five seasons in. Um, and she's like, you're right. I mean, I would care if something happened, but nothing ever happens. And I, you know, was kind of thinking about it after the finale, thinking, um, you know, this was kind of, kind of going to be the season where something finally broke for him. Um, you know, he, he did decide he was going to be Saul and all that, but nothing substantial, really, nothing exciting really happened. Um, you know, he's trying to get his license back and whatever to so he can practice law and he's going to do it as Saul Goodman. But, you know, I really, going into this season, I, I kept kind of waiting for either Kim or Nacho to die because those have been kind of the, the biggest side characters that they've set up um, for just specifically for Better Call Saul. And, you know, if this was Breaking Bad, somebody would have been, uh, would have been dying by now. And it, it hasn't happened, you know, so, uh, Hector Salamanca, he had his accident. And, you know, it's kind of one of those shows that uh, a little bit like Solo was, where it's like, okay, it's this origin story. So we have to tell the origin of every little piece of information that you saw. Um, the good thing that looks like is happening is it looks like, we're getting close to where Breaking Bad started. Uh, Breaking Bad started in 2008 or 2009, I believe. Um, and then Better Call Saul, at one point they showed his brother's grave. And um, it said he died in 2007. So we're getting very close to the beginning of Breaking Bad. So we might see some crossovers with Jesse Pinkman or Walter White. You know, those things starting to come up. Um, so that'll be interesting if they if they start meshing the two worlds. But right now it's just like... Oh yeah, here's where his car came from. Here's where his name came from. Here's this one-off joke he told. Let's give you the whole backstory on that. So it's it's just a lot of fan service for the sake of fan service. It's like we threw this, we had this throwaway line in Breaking Bad. Now let's extrapolate on that, which is fun sometimes, but it doesn't like the the one where he convinced a woman he was Michael Keaton, I believe. Um, they, they kind of showed the backstory behind that, which that one's okay, but then they kind of start building that way into every little detail. And it's just like, I, I don't care that much about every little detail of his life. Let's tell a compelling story. And they haven't really done that yet in my mind. Hopefully going into the next season, it'll start getting more compelling. I, I think they're probably getting close to the end. I'm sure they're not going to cross too much over what Breaking Bad has already done. So I'm sure once they reach where he's meeting Walter, that then it'll kind of trail off. Um, that's all for the show today. Thanks for listening. Um, if you're on iTunes, rate, review, subscribe. Um, you can check us out on Twitter at APA something or send feedback through email to a podcast about something at gmail.com. You can also, uh, if you feel like it, you can, uh, become a patron on Patreon and that's patreon.com slash a podcast about something. And you can, if you don't want to do the, the monthly subscription for Patreon, you can always just uh, send PayPal to a podcast about something at gmail.com. Any little bit helps, you know, cover costs of new equipment. I just got a new um, headset microphone that I'm recording this on. So if it sounds different than the actual episode, that's why. Um, so, you know, anything helps, hosting costs, microphones, things like that. Um, just keep the show going if you enjoy it. The uh, music, as always, is provided by Those Cats. Check them out when you get a chance. Thank you for listening. Stay classy.